Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Sukkah Chavtes. We begin three lines from the top of the Amid. Says the Gemara, Omar Rav, Mani Mishtaya, Kalim, which are used for drinking, bottles, cups, glasses, Bimitalato, can be left behind in the Sukkah even after use. They're relatively clean, there's no concern there. However, Mani Michla, Kalim, which are used for food items, bowls, plates, so after use, they were to be taken out. Barmim talata should be removed from the sukkah because they're unclean and it's disrespectful to leave them behind in the sukkah. Tesis learns we're referring to pots and pans which are never meant to be brought to the table in the first place and they should be left out of the sukkah to begin with. Says the Gemara Chatzba, a earthen bucket, Vishachal, a wooden bucket. Here as well, Barmim talata, they should be left outside the sukkah they don't really have a place in the sukkah to begin with. Ushraga, what about a candle used to illuminate the sukkah and to provide light for the meal? Bimitalata, that should be brought in the sukkah. Vamila, some say differently. Barmim talata, the candles places outside the sukkah. Vilay pligi, there's no there's no machlekes depending uh, how large the sukkah is. Hava sukkah gdola, if it's a large sukkah, could accommodate candles. Go ahead, bring it in. How about sukkah katana? If it's a small size sukkah, don't bring the candle in. We're afraid it's going to burn down the sukkah. Leave the candle outside. The Mishnah spoke about Yordu Gishamim. It begins raining. You can leave the sukkah once it gets to the point where it's unbearable. And the Mishnah gives a rule of thumb, which is Mishetisra Ha Mikpah. Once the Mikpah, the, the dish, this uh, cereal or whatever, the soup, gets spoiled because of the raindrops. And that's the point. That you can leave your sukkah. Tana, we learned in a brisa. What type of dish are we speaking about? Mishatisracha mikpah shall greasen. We're speaking about a mikpah made of greasen of beans, which are more um, sensitive and get spoiled easier. So it's actually a shorter period of time. It's a kula. Once it begins raining to the, the point that if you were to have a mikpah shall greasen, it would get spoiled, you've reached the point of mitztair. You're at a point of discomfort where you can leave your sukkah. Abayi have a Yosef kameder of Yosef bimtalalta. Abayi was sitting in front of Rabbi Yosef in a sukkah. Nosha of zika, the wind began to blow, v'kamaitzi siv vasa, and splinters started falling off the schach. Amalu Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef declared to them, "Penuli mani mecha. Let's go. Please um, remove my kalim. Let's leave the sukkah." How can you do that? It's not raining yet. It's not drizzling into your food. Why are you leaving the sukkah? He responded, that description in the Mishnah is all relative. It's relative to a person's uh, level of tolerance. By me, since I'm overly sensitive. So even splinters coming off the schach, already presents a level of discomfort which is considered mitztair and ampata from sukh. Kimi tisra chamikba domili. It's considered to me like tisra chamikba. Says Rashi, 14 lines from the top, mikba shall greasen. So it's a kula because greasen are more susceptible. Maheras lekalka, lugeshamimat, a bit of rain will spoil them. And Abayi was experiencing these Splinters shutting off the schach tziv vasa kismin shal schach ayimeisha ala machal, and the more explains Rav Yisuf was meanine hada sava. He was overly sensitive, as we find in a Gemara. The sani beperek arvi psacham shloisha chayin ein ein chayim. The Gemara describes three categories of people, three personalities, which are really bad. They're not really experiencing life the way they're supposed to. Harachmanen, those who are overly compassionate, varaschanen. Irritable people, overly sensitive. They can't tolerate anything repulsive. But Rav Yosef, listen to this. Says Rav Yosef, Kulu is who be all these three. Rachman and Raschan and Niyadas are contained within me. So we find that Rav Yosef was sensitive, as per the story in Al Gemara as well. And the Mepharshim speak out that this is just a general. Uh, guideline, meaning 
whatever is considered beyond the point of tolerance to ordinary people um, justifies, is considered a mitzvah which allows leaving the sukkah. Continues the Gemara. Tanur Rabban, Hayyachu Besuk, this fellow was eating in the sukkah. Yard the Gesham began to rain. The yard he left his sukkah. The sukkah used to be on the roofs. So he used to come down into the house, and he sat down to continue his suda. And he notices, well, it stopped raining. Does he have to go back? We don't trouble him. We have to go back to the sukkah. Until he completes his meal. Let's go over to Rashi. Off to the right. So he left the sukkah to complete his meal. He sits down and suddenly, well, it stopped raining. He doesn't have to interrupt his meal again and go back to the sukkah. And the point here is, sukkah is meant to be similar to your all year round residence. One doesn't begin a meal and interrupts and begins again. That's not the way you do it. Likewise on sukkahs, once he's in the house, he doesn't have to go back to the sukkah until he finishes eating. Now there's a diak in Rashi, Chavetz Chaim is medayik this diak, says Rashi. Let's say he sits down but he hadn't yet continued his meal. He just sat down to continue his meal in the house. It says the Chavetz Chaim, it's Meduyik and Rashi, that's sufficient. Once he sits down to continue his meal in his house, even if he hadn't yet actually continued his meal, that's enough. Just stay there until you're done. There's no need to be matriach to interrupt your meal again. And the interesting shita, the ritva, the ran bring it, I'm not sure if it's brought lahalacha, that even if you actually notice he sees rain clouds approaching. He knows it's going to start raining any moment. He doesn't even have to go to the sukkah because if you know that your sukkah is going, to, your meal is going to be interrupted, that's not keshu kein to duru. That's not the way you live all year round. And therefore, they say you can just begin your meal at home even before it starts raining. The chiddush continues the brayso. It's another example of this halach. Yoshin tachas sukkah is sleeping in the sukkah. Yoridu gushama begins raining. Yorad. He leaves his sukkah and goes into his house. And then he notices the rain stopped. Once again, he doesn't have to trouble himself to go back to the sukkah. Until yeir. What does yeir mean? The Bnei HaYeshiva wanted to know yeir is spelled with an ayin until he awakens, meaning even if it's still midnight, it's still dark. But once he woke up again, it's not such a great tircha, just go back to the sukkah. So again, he started in the sukkah, started to rain, he came into the house, went to sleep, then for some reason he woke up, woke up before dawn, before daytime arrives. So once he's up, perhaps, he should be chayv to go back to the sukkah. That's one side of the equation, sheyei er with an ayin, oyat sheyei oy with an aleph, which means until it gets light. Otherwise, even if he actually woke up for some reason, but it's still night, continue sleeping, until morning. So which way is it? Awakening or getting light? Tashma, listen to this price. Price says, Now, the Gemara figures, if it's with an Aleph, then the price is presenting an apparent contradiction. Sheyeyer means once it really gets light. Netacham, sunrise. Yalom Shachar. It's just dawn. So it's earlier than actually sunlight. So it's a steer in the Bryce. Tarte, you're saying two things which don't really work with each other. Ella, Ema, apparently you have to respell that word, Achiyi Oyer, with an ayin. Achiyi Oyer, Viyal Medashach. The Bryce is telling you a kula. He left the sukkah, came back home, went to sleep, and he notices that the rain stopped. There's no need to go back unless two things happen. Dawn arrived, was yellow with the shachar, and he happened to wake up as well. Meaning, if he's just up and it's still more than night, go back to sleep, don't worry about it. Likewise, if morning arrives and he's still sleeping, no need to wake him up. So, again, Teshu Kain Tadura tells you just live normally. You don't have to burden yourself to that extent. Wake up and go back to your sukkah. Continues the Gemara. Mashal Lamad of So, if it starts raining, it's not necessarily a good sign. It's like a mashal, 
of an Evid who's serving his master. He's pouring him a cup of water. And the Mishnah says, what happened was, V'shafach le'kitin al-panav. He poured the pitcher of water into his face. Iboilu, the question was, Mishafach le'mi. We understand from the Mishnah that rain on Sukkot is not necessarily a good sign. The Ramam says, we're speaking about Tchilas HaSukkot. Farsham explained that to be referring to the first night when you have to eat in the Sukkah. And of course, the Farsham explained, we're speaking in environments where it's not meant to rain that time of the year, it's a stroll and so forth. So it's not a good sermon. But the question is, who poured the pitcher into whose face? Mishafach Lemi. Was it the master pouring the pitcher into the servant's face? Get away, I'm not interested in your service. Or is the Mishnah describing the uh, deficiency in the Evet? The Evet is serving his master in this inappropriate way. It's like he's pouring the pitcher in his face. So rain on Sukkot is an indication of Kral Yisrael's lack of enthusiasm in their mitzvah. So it's describing the inappropriateness of their service of Hashem. So which one is it? Now, there's no nafkemina la halacha, Rashi says. Either way, it's a seminar call. The question just is, how do we define, how do we interpret the words of the Mishnah? Who's pouring to? Tashma, listen to this b'risa, which says, the sanya shafach lay rabbi kitan it's the rabbi pouring the pitcher into the servant's face by telling him, I'm not interested in your service. So raining on sukkahs is indicative of that type of reaction from Hashem, that type of rejection, which requires us to hearken, take into heart, and to, um, to improve our ways. To, uh, so Hashem appreciates what we do. Tanar Abbanah, listen to this b'risa, which is really somewhat of a continuation of the previous discussion. Rashi says, Once we discussed simanam, which are troublesome and worrisome, uh, that's why the b'risa will present us with similar, uh, similar simanam. Tana Rabbana, Bizman Shacham Aleikah. When we see the sun dimming, uh, some interpret this to be referring to an eclipse. So when the Chama is like, when the Chama gets hit, Simen Ra L'chol It's a concerning sign for the entire world. It's not a good Simen. When the sun, which is the primary illuminator, gets hit, uh, is dimmed, is darkened. Mashal L'moha Dabadoyme, what is this similar to? L'melech Basar Adam, a human king she'asa suda l'avadav. He arranged a banquet for his avadav. V'neach panas l'fneim, and he presented a lantern. So he illuminated the meal, he placed lanterns, ka salem, and suddenly he got upset at his avadav. V'amar la'avdai. So he turns to his servant, and he says, look, toil panas m'pneim. Leave the food here, but just take away the lantern. V'ashiva m'chayshach. Seat them in darkness. Likewise, the sun, which gets darkened, is a simon of rejection. Now, there are two approaches to this Gemara and to the upcoming Gemaras as well. Two approaches in the Mepharshim. There's a kasha here. Well, we all know that eclipses, whether solar or lunar, are pre-calculated. We all know in advance. It's just a normal course of nature that these things will happen. The heavenly bodies will cross over and block each other's light. Why is that a simon ra? So there are two approaches. One approach is that's not what the Gemara is referring to. We're not referring to your typical eclipses, which are pre-planned, pre-programmed, foretold, and p- just part of the, uh, the, the, uh, the orbiting uh, system here. We're speaking about unusual eclipses, unusual dimmings of the sun and the moon. That's one approach. The Maharal, however, learns differently. He says we're referring to the typical, standard, natural eclipses. The fact of the matter is that Hashem pre-programmed those moments into the world which are indicative of a Simon of judgment and din, the fact that there is a diminishing of light, a deficiency in the illumination, whether sun, moon, stars, those are pre-ordained moments of din, of justice, and are indicative of, uh, of din in the world, of judgment, which is now preeminent in the world, which requires us to hearken, take, uh, take stock, and, uh, and better our ways. So two approaches in the Gemara. 
as to what we're referring to. So that's the first price. When the sun gets hit, it's a simon ra for the entire world. Continues the with another sheet. Tanya or Meoimer. Kozman Shema Eris Loikin. When the illuminators uh, are hit and, and become dimmed, Simen Ra Lusun Eim Shal Yisrael. It's a Simen Ra for the Sun Eim, the enemies of Yisrael. It's a euphemism. It's a Simen Ra for Yisrael. We must take heed and do Teshuva. Why specifically Yisrael? We have other uh, company in this world. Says the Gemara, you know why? Nashim Ulumadin Makisayan. Klaw Yisrael are accustomed. To getting hit. Let's go down to Rashi, the first wide line. You know why Hashem displays this simon? On account of us. So we have to take heed more, more than anybody else. Because Klai Yisrael accustomed to being hit more than everybody else. Hashem keeps us in shape, keeps us on track, and everything out there is a similar for us to improve in our ways. Says the Gemara, Mashal is safer, it's like a, like a teacher. Shabal is safer, shows up in school, Rutsu Biyadi with a whip in his hands, about to hit somebody, and they don't know who he's aiming for. Me Doig, who's going to be a Student, that's the most worried. <laughs> the fellow that gets hit every day, he's going to be the most worried of all. And likewise, explains Rashi, Israel are the ones that are regil and lilkais, we're the most accustomed to getting Aishim and getting uh, uh, reprimanded by Hashem. Hashem wants to keep us, keep us uh, on the right track. In fact, listen to this, there's a a brisa in Masechas Gerim, not so well known. Masechta, it's a collection of brises, but at the end of the Avodazar uh, Hirius Edius um, volume. Listen to this brisa. Roitelis Geir, if a fellow approaches Bezdin, he wants to convert. Ein mekablon oisim yad. We don't accept him initially. We try to dissuade him. Oimim loy malachalis Geir. What's the point of becoming a Geir? Valet roya. Don't you see asum azoyis this nation? Klai Yisrael. We're downtrodden. Shvela from all the umas. We have the most illnesses and yisurim of all the nations. And the Chidah here writes, why is it that Kal Yisrael experience tragedy and chaloyim more than everybody else? That's how Hashem cleanses us from our virus. You know, it's a well-known fact. They took a survey amongst the uh, doctors who serve in the oncology wards and hospitals. And they said, unfortunately, there is a disproportionate amount of Jewish patients throughout the wards. Hashem wants to purify us, keep us in, intact, keep us in spiritual shape, and keep us on track. So when there's a simon around the world, cholesterol, more than all our nations have to really pay attention. Says the Gemara is a third price. So in first price we had when the Chama is loika, it's a simen ra the Cholayim. Reb Meir maintained that it's a simen ra li Yisra. Comes a third price and draws a line between the sun and the moon. Tanu Rabbanu b'zman shachama loika. When the sun gets hit, gets dimmed, simen ra lo evdeke chavim. It's a bad simon for the Goyim because they relate to the sun. They run uh, their calendar based on the sun. Levana, like when the moon becomes deficient, simon rala sunayim shal Yisrael. Oh, that's a concerning sign for Yisrael. Of why Mepnesh Yisrael mining in Levana? Because Yisrael run their year based on the lunar uh, calendar. So they relate to the Levana and it relates to them. Whereas the Goyim, they uh, conduct their year based on the uh, solar system. So anything pertaining to the Chama is a sign and a concern for them. Says the Brayse, like of a Mizrach. What if the sun was dimmed while it was in the east, towards the beginning of, of the day? 
Simon Ra Yesha Mizrach, it's a concerning sign to the dwellers in the east. Bimarav. If the simon occurred when the sun was already towards the Marav, Simon Ra Yeshim Marav, it's a concerning sign for the people in Marav. Beemza Rakia, if it was in the midpoint of the sky, Simon Ra Kalim Kuloi, it's a concerning sign for everybody. Pon of Daimin Ladam Kherv. If the um, sun appears reddish, like dam, like blood, panam daimun ladam, cherev balo oilam, that's an indicator of bloodshed coming to the world. Lesak, if it appears blackened like a sack, chitze ro bain lo oilam, it's an indication of famine arriving. Luzu luzu presents as blood and a sack, cherev vechitze ro bain lo oilam, that's a sign of both tragic events to be anticipated, bloodshed and famine. Laka beknis sasa, if this um, dimming occurs bichni sasai, which means when the sun is setting, going into the horizon, that's a sign that things are going to go slowly. Per onus shoyelove, tragic events will be slow in coming, just as the sun sort of waited it out until the end of the day to present itself as such. Bitsi asai, however, if the simon presented itself as the sun left the horizon, as soon as the sun rose, that's a sign of Mimaheris Lovai that the tragic event will be quick in coming, just as the simon presented itself so so quickly. Some say in the reverse. That if the simon presents itself at the end of the day, that's a sign that it's going to be quick in coming, just as the simon is here just a very short time. It's here and it's gone, that it means things are progressing quickly, whereas if the simon presents itself at the beginning of the day, that's a sign that things are going slowly, because the simon will be here uh, throughout the day, it's uh, a simon that things are not moving so quickly, and there's still time, uh, time to wait it out. Says the Bryce, We always find that when a nation gets struck, we don't find a nation without its God, meaning every nation has a representative, an ambassador, a minister, a sire in Shomayim, who looks after it, advocates for it. So when Hashem hits an Ummah, it's together with its Malach. Shenemar, we find a Mitzrayim. Not only did Hashem hit and strike Mitzrayim, but all the gods of Mitzrayim, the Sarim, the Malachim, Shomayim, came along as well. It's one package, the nation and its representation in Shemayim. Rashi brings the marshal, Samuel Shayasare Shal Esav. Says the Bryce, although we speak about all these concerning signs, when we discern some deficiencies and dimmings within the heavenly bodies, that really only applies to those who are under the influence of those celestial bodies. However, Yisrael, we can rise above, out of the influence, beyond the reach of these, of these Chama um, and Kechavim. Wizman she Yisrael Eisen retain Shal Malkin. When Yisrael follow the way of Hashem, Ein Mis Yarem Kol Elu. They have no reason to be concerned from any of these Simanim. Shenam Akoyim Hashem. El Derech Agayim Al Tilmdu. Don't learn the ways of the Goyim. If that's the case, you stick to Hashem. You're above reach. You're beyond the realm. Of these physical phenomena, don't be afraid of all these worrying signs discerned in heaven. Are concerned when they experience these concerning signs. Only they worry and have fear. Yisrael should not have any worry and fear if we're connected to Hashem. Turn around. The four reasons why the sun will be dimmed. The head of the Bezin dies. And he wasn't eulogized properly. So the Avbezin is the Godel, is the biggest Talmud Chacham, like a sun, a illuminator. And if he's not regarded with proper respect, the sun suffers. That's number one. Valnara Muras, a betrothed girl who was abused, she called for help in the city. Nobody came to help her. And Masha says, it was as clear as day that she needed help, and nobody responded. The sun suffers. Val Mishka inappropriate behavior between men, and the Erechel um, Ner explains 
an ish is meant to be a provider, mashpia. Here you turned it, an ish, from a provider to a recipient. A son, who is meant to be the world's provider, suffers as well. On account of two brothers who are killed at once. There are four reasons why the luminaries, Rashi says, referring not to the sun this time, but to the Yerech Kechavim, the moon and the stars, like can they get dimmed for four reasons. Al Kaisfe plaster, those who engage in writing and forging documents uh, to set people up, and frame people. Valmi de is Sheker. And for those people who are uh, offer false testimony, those who raise light animals in Israel, who devour the vegetation, and those people who chop down fruit bearing trees, by doing so they indicate that they're rejecting, they're not appreciating the brach of Hashem. And the result of this is the Ma'irois um, Lakin. There are four reasons why the uh, assets of Bali Batim, wealthy individuals, will be handed over to the authorities. Number one, Al Mashe Shtores Purim. They keep around loan documents which have already been paid up. They keep it around to um, manipulate, to blackmail the, the loiva once again, to pay again. So it's inappropriate behavior with their money. So it's a money-related offense, and the midah connected to midah is they lose their money. Or they lend with ribis. Let's go to Rashi here. On the top line, It was in their hands, in their ability. They see people doing things inappropriately. They have the ability, the leaders, the wealthy individuals. Who have influence, they should exert their influence. Says Rashi, should the Fact of the matter is, it's human nature. People listen to wealthy people; their words carry weight. Everybody trembles in fear from these ashirim. So, although they have the ability to influence, to mashpia, to keep their community in check, they don't exert their influence. They don't live up to their responsibility. And as a result, they lose their position, they lose their hierarchy, they lose their money. Continues Rashi. Uh, sorry, the Gemara. Another reason why they lose their money is because they promise, they pledge, all types of pledges in public. Big Misha Beirach, um, big donation, and when it comes, bottom line, they don't pay it. So these are four offenses related to monies and the result is Hashem takes away that money. There are four reasons why the Nechasim of Balibatim dwindle and get lost. Once again they they're engaged in inappropriate behavior on account of their money, on account of their haughtiness, their Kaifshir They withhold wages from their workers, Val they deny they work on the wages that are coming to them. They take uh, communal responsibilities that they should be engaged in, and they pass it on, they delegate to others. Valgas is an account of haughtiness. Their wealth brings them to haughtiness, Hashem takes away their wealth. Concludes the Braisa. This concept of gases of Gava beats them all. It's equal to everything, it's the worst. Ava Banovim. And the Gemara wants to conclude on a good note. Aval ba'novim, regarding humble people, ksiv, ba'novim Yeshu Oretz, this angol Rav Sholem, they get what they need, Hashem provides them, Hashem sees. It's not going to be to their detriment. They're still going to remain anovim and humble. And therefore Hashem doesn't hesitate to give them a bracha. Hadron l'chayosh, says the Mishnah, lulav ha'gozl v'ayavish pasal. Now we're going to discuss the qualifications for the Dalad Minim, the Lulav, the Esrik, the Hadassim, the Haravis. And the mission begins with the Lulav, which is the most prominent, the tallest of all the Minim. Lulav, Hagozal, if it's stolen, by Yavish, or it's a dried out Lulav. On both accounts, we say it's puzzle, unfit for Sukkot's use. 
The reason why a guzzle is puzzle, Pasuk says, Ulkachtam Lochem, has to be yours. Stolen is not yours. A Yavish is puzzle as well. Now, what exactly is Yavish? So Tosis brings, perhaps, uh, we'll compare it to another Gemara, and I have once 12 months pass, that's called Yavish. Is that what the Mishnah means? He says it can't be, because the Gemara later speaks about a Hadas, where most of the leaves were Yavish, but some remained fresh. Now, if it's already 12 months old, then the whole thing is Yavish. So it can't mean uh, it's a time-dependent de- definition. Rather, he says, It's dry enough that when you flick it with your nail, it cracks. That's Tesis Pshat. The Iran disagrees, he says, Yavish is not a defined description. It's all relative. You look at it, it appears to be fully dried up. It's all white and dried. That's considered Yavish and that's puzzle. In fact, the Ravad seems to be going with that approach. He brings a Yerushalmi. That when something is so dried out and it's white, it looks like a mace. You can't use it. Pasuk says, Loi ha yahaluluka, something which is dried out without life. It's not meant to be used for praising of Hashem. So he says, Alulav ha yavish is pasal, loi ha meisim yahaluluka. In fact, the Balaturim in Chumash attaches a remez, a gematria to it. He says, Lulav, Lamed Vav, Lamed Veis, Id Begimatria, Life, Chayim, Ches, Yud, Yud, Mem, 68. And therefore he says, if it's dried up, it no longer has life. It's puzzle for, suki, for Sukkot's use. So, Gazal Yavash a puzzle, Shil Asherah, if a Lulav was picked off an Asherah tree, which was used for Abed Zara, Shil Iran Adachas, or was taken from a city whose inhabitants worshipped Abed Zara, in both cases, Rashi explains because the avodizara material, the little material, is meant to be burnt, and therefore it's not meant for sukkah's use. In both cases, we say it's puzzle. Niktam roishay. What if its uh, head, if its uh, tip, got clipped off? Nifritzu olaf, or its leaves have become detached from its spine. So even if you reatt- reattach, you bundle it back together, puzzle. Rashi explains. In both cases, because it's no, no longer harder. It's no longer beautiful. Nifrudola, what if they leave simply spread out, but they're still attached to the spine? Kasher. Rabbi Da'imer, Yagdenu Mulamala. In this case, you should go ahead and tie them together on top, so that lying side by side nicely. Sine, the palm trees, Harabarzel, this specific species of palm trees, whose leaves were generally shorter than your typical lulav. Shavers, they're also kasher. The more explains, provided that the leaf reaches the um, leaf above it. So you have one leaf, and the leaf below it reaches the beginning of the next leaf. So typically the leaves overlap. You have a spine. Along the spine you have leaves, which overlap. It's in our basil have relatively short leaves, but if they reach, each one reaches the, the one above it, that's okay. The mission concludes, Regarding this shear, how long does the lulav have to be? It has to be four tfachim long. Lulav shiyesh by shloisha tfachim. Kedeilin anea by kosher. If the lulav is three tfachim long, so that's number one. Three tfachim is actually the same length as the hadas and the arava, alongside the lulav. So it needs to be three plus another tefach. So it's a tefach above the hadas and the arava, and that's kedeilin anea by, so you can shake it, it could have free wiggle space, that's the minimum share of a lulav and then it's kosher. Let's go over to Rashi. Beginning of the uh, parakeet. Lulav hagos. Lulav is the kaf shel tamarim. The uh, palm branch. Vahadur tani hadas varav v'apenafshai. Rashi explaining that lulav generally is the front of the entire bundle, but not here. The lulav is just a lulav, and later on we'll discuss the hadas and the arav. If it's stolen, it's gosel, it's possible. That's to be your item. Yavish, what's wrong with that? That mitzvah needs to be something beautiful. Asks Taisis, what do you mean? That's only the chatchila. We learned that back on the Fir Aleph. Zekhele vanveyu is just a chatchila. It's not me'akev. So Taisis learns the psul of Yavish is because the Pasuk says, Ulokachtam lachem bayim rishon, creates hadar, has to be beautiful, a specific uh, requirement by the uh, 
Esrog and by the Lulav as well. It has to be harder. And that's Miyakiv. Now, Kivega says that perhaps Rashi uh, agrees to Tosis and concept that Hadar is enough a reason uh, to be Paisal the Yavish, but he's coming to address another question. What happens past the first day of Sukkot? See, the Pasuk says, Ulukachta Mulcham Bayam Rishon creates Hadar. Hadar perhaps only applies to the first day. What about in the second or third day? So that's why Rashi chooses to um, present the basis of this halacha as a zekeli ranveyu halacha, which applies even on the second day, even when there's no hadar to be applied. Continues Rashi, shela shera. So the lulav was taken off an ashera tree. Ilan shoivdan isla vedizara, a tree which was worshipped for vedizara. Ugmar and fire time. What's wrong with it? Shelan edachas taken from a city whose inhabitants served the vedizara. Because anything in that city is meant to be burned. So since all items in that city are slated for Sreifa, it's unsuitable for Lulav use. Why? What's the connection? Explains Rashi. Keep in mind, Lulav means to have a sheer, a significant size. Since this Lulav is slated for Sreifa, it's like it doesn't have a sheer. It's like it's burned. Meaning, Sure, it's here now. But as far as chashivas, prominence, which is expressed by the sheer, by the size, that gives it prominence. Something which is slated for strafa no longer has chashivas. It's not considered an item which has prominence and significance, and it's as though it doesn't have a sheer. It's there, but it's, it doesn't have a size. <laughs> it doesn't have chashivas. And therefore, it's missing its sheer. Niktam Roshay, lost its head, it's clipped off. Puzzle, once again, the Loyave Hodder. It's lacking in Hodder. You notice the top, the tip, that's the most pronounced feature of the Lulav. It's clipped off, it's lo- it lost its Hodder. Tesis learns perhaps it means most of the upper leaves, tips were, were clipped off. Nifritsu Olav says Rashi Mishidra, the leaves were detached from its spine. Veinu Mechabar and Elai Agud. They were tied back together, but it's like a kichufi, like a broom. Shikar and Ashkuba. Once again, lav hadaru. Tosis disagrees with Rashi's pshat. He learns that nifritzu olav doesn't mean that it was detached from the spine. It's still attached, but the leaves themselves were split. We know that the lulav leaves are really double leaves. Each one is a folded over leaf. And those leaves were split. They're still attached to the shredra. They're split. They appear like a broom. That's nifritzu olav according to Tosis. And that's puzzle. However, nifr do olav, mechubar name b'shedu is still attached to the spine. El shalamala nifrad and lakan lakan ke anfe ilam. They appear to sort of go in different directions. They're spreading apart like branches coming out of a tree. It's kosher. Rida says yagdenu malamala, just tie them back together. Im nifr do olav yagdenu, just bundle them together. Shu elinu mashedu kshalav, and so they appear lying neatly alongside the spine of the lulav, like your typical lulav. What about tini hara barzel? More fire speaking, more exactly what species this is. Tsine are the column palm trees. Kshero is lovish land, even the love coming from those trees are kosher. Even though they have very short leaves. They don't really follow along the shedra, they're short leaves. Still says the Gemara, they're kosher. And what is the shear of your lulav? Tells us the Mishnah. It needs to be three tvachim, kedelin aneaboy. Explains Rashi, it really means four tvachim in total. The actual spine of the lula from which the leaves come out needs to be firstly three tvachim, which is the same as the hadas and the rava lying alongside that lula, and has to be more than that. The spine of the lula needs to be a tavach higher than the hadas, to allow it to be shaken and wiggled all around. The be'ina ne'anuok the kaman, the gemara will tell us. That Nanua plays an important role in the key mitzvah of Lulav. Mala, Moyred, he lifts, it puts down. Moyred, he waves back and forth. Lots of Ruchas Rois, Utlalim Roim. To keep the harmful winds and harmful dews at bay. So the shear of the Lulav needs to be something which addresses that Indian of Nanua. And the Chiddush is, the Farshim point this out, the Chiddush is, Nanua is not even Ma'akiv. Just lifting the Lulav is enough to be kind of mitzvah. 
shaking it and wiggling it is part of the mitzvah. It's not me'ak of the mitzvah. Even so, we see that it's an integral part of the rule of item. Meaning, although you don't have to do not know to be able to the mitzvah, but the rule of itself has to be enabled and roy for that element of mitzvah performance. Otherwise, it's lacking the sheer, it doesn't conform. Says the Gemara, Kapasik Vitani. Take a look at the beginning of the Mishnah. Lulav Hagazal Vayavish, Puzzle. Mishnah sets forth a pretty set and standard formula that Gazal and Yavish are Puzzle. Loishna Biyamtiv Rishin, whether it's on the first day of Yamtiv, where there's a Chiv Minat Torah to take a Lulav. For Loishna Biyamtiv Shen, you are on the second day of Yamtiv, where Rashi will explain for us it's only a mitzvah and there you see in the Beis HaMikdash, it was a mitzvah to take the Lulav all throughout Yom Tov, all throughout the seven days, but otherwise, outside the Mikdash, only the first day of Minat Torah. Afterwards, you do it, Zeichar the Mikdash. It's only the Rabbana, and the Gemara wants to know, if so, why are we disqualifying a Lulav HaGazal VaYavish? Bishlami Yavish, we understand why a dried out Lulav is disqualified even for the second day. Hadar Ba'inam. It needs to be beautiful. Even the second day, where it's the Rabbanon, we need Hidr Mitzvah. But even Hadr be, be lack. you don't have it. Ela Gazel, what's wrong with a stolen Lulav? So it's not yours. Bishlam Yom Tov Arishan Dechsev Lachem Shalachem. On the first day of Yom Tov, it says, Lachem Lachem, has to be yours. Ela Yom Tov Sheni Amai Loib, what's wrong with the second day? It's only the Rabbanon. There's no need for it to be Lachem. Let's go down to Rashi. Five lines from the bottom. Kapasak Vatani Mishnah states it as a set fact. Kapasak Vatani Puzzle. Learning to Shnab Yamta Rishin, where it's the Chiyuvi Midar Raisa. Learning Shnab Yamta Shani, the last day of Matilas Lulav, Elman Drabbanan. When Rishin said, Puzzle speaks out the first day. Past the first day, it's only Drabbanan. Rishin, let me Yavish understand if it's dried out. It's possible with Drabbanan Nami. Even on the second day, give it the mitzvah. Mishnah Zechel Amidash. It's a mitzvah to do something as a remembrance. What was done in the Middash. It's a mitzvah drabana, and therefore says Rashi be in and hither mitzvah. I understand why Yavish is disqualified, but ownership? Am I loy? Mehecha teisel mifsali. Why should we puzzle? On the first day it says, Ul kachtam lachem, by Marisha, has to be yours. But otherwise, who cares if it's gossip? Says the Gemara on the bottom line, Amar biyechnan. Meshum rabbi shimon yuchai is a new psal. Meshum da havalai, mitzvah habab aver. A person cannot do a mitzvah. By way of an Avera. A stolen item is unsuitable for mitzvah use. Be it on the first day, be it on the second day. And therefore, a Lulva Gazel is puzzle even for a mitzvah the Rabbana on the second day of Sukkot. Okay, let's recap the main points of today's daf. Which uh, kalim belong in your Sukkot? Well, once he's finished with the clay achila, remove it from the Sukkot. Buckets don't belong in the Sukkot to begin with. Clay shtia, even after use, can remain in the sukkah. What about an air? It's a large enough sukkah? Sure, be my guest. A small sukkah with concern about a fire, leave it outside. If a person was eating in the sukkah or sleeping in the sukkah and it started raining and he left the sukkah and resumed his meal or is sleeping in the home, there's no need to come back until he's done, until he's done his meal, until he wakes up in the morning. We learned about the dimming of the illuminators, sun, the moon, the stars, which are meant to be messages concerning signs for the dwellers down here on earth to be more eager us to do tshuva. We found four reasons for the heavenly bodies uh, getting dimmed. We found several reasons why the nechassim balabatim are taken away. And we learned about the psulim of a lulav. Gazel of a yavish is puzzle. Well, the reason why a yavish is puzzle is because it's not hadar. Or is it a van veil? Regarding a gazel, all well, depends on the first day. Past the first day, the Gemara concludes, it's a mitzvah above Avera. When it's from an Asher, Iran, and Dachatz, avoid the Zohar related items, which require Shreifa, Rashi explains, it loses its significance. It's slated for burning. It no longer has its Shir. Niktam Roisha, Nefer to Olav, once again are possible because of lack of Hodah. What is the Shir of a Lulav? For Tvach. Kotav to you and Atzlacharav.